It's now time to learn how to edit your images in Darktable with a real world project that you can submit after you've completed your edit. So let's jump back into Darktable and get started. All right, so here's the image we're going to be working on. And this is included in your section three folder. And here's the final edit that I created. How cool is that? I love it. All right, so let me show you how I achieved this edit. And I need to go into the history panel and click right here to clear the history to remove all those edits. All right, so the first thing that I like to do before I edit an image is look at the histogram, which we can see up here. And you can see that it's severely underexposed, which is pretty interesting since I shot this with an exposure or a shutter speed of 30 seconds. So I didn't nail the exposure in camera and now we need to fix it. And we're going to use the exposure module to brighten it up. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the exposure by sliding this to the right. And as you can see, the histogram begins moving to the right to fill in that gap. And if I go to around two stops brighter, we can see that the histogram is beginning to be clipped right here on the right side. So I might be losing some detail with that clipping. And to verify if I am or not, I'm going to go ahead and use my clipping indicators, which are located down here. Actually, it's this icon right here. So once you click on that, you'll see this red or blue or both overlays on your image indicating that the detail in that part of the tonal range is being clipped. So the red overlay here in the sky is an overexposure indicator. So I'm losing detail in the sky. So I increased the exposure too much. Now there's also a blue overlay and it's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to go ahead and use my scroll wheel on my mouse to scroll in and you can see little specks of blue in the tree stumps and I'm okay with that. I'm not going to try and correct that because it's not going to really help this image that much because we're not going to see the detail in there anyway, especially when I'm done editing and darkening up that part of the image. So what I do want to do though, is I want to lower the exposure value until these red overlays, these little dots here disappear. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my slider and move it to the left until they're all gone. So right about there. So reading the histogram is an awesome way for figuring out where to start your editing. It's going to tell you if your image is over or underexposed and what parts of the tonal range need to be fixed. So in this case, the highlights and the whites needed to be fixed in order to correct the exposure. So once you fix the exposure, you then have to determine what's next. Well, for me, that would be the white balance because I see that the image is very blue and I think it's too blue for my taste. So again, I didn't get the correct white balance in camera. So let's go ahead and fix that. So if we navigate to the quick access panel, you're going to find the white balance setting options here at the bottom. And these settings are the ones that were applied during capture of this image. So I should have increased the Kelvin temperature before I took the photo. But since I didn't do that, I'm going to go ahead and drag this to the right. And I think I want to place it right around 12,000 for the Kelvin. And I also want to increase the red tint a little bit as well to add a little bit of red and reduce the green. Now, when it comes to white balance for an image like this, it's more of a personal preference. There's also, if you take a look down here, some white balance settings down here that will help you set the white balance to remove color tints. So if you click on your eyedropper tool here, what you want to do is you want to click on an area in your image that should be either pure white or pure black or pure gray. And then when you click on it, it samples those colors in there and it removes the colors so that part of the image is pure white, pure black, or pure gray. So a neutral gray. And that removes the color casts, which in effect is white balancing your image. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to adjust the contrast. That's a little flat right now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my tone curve here because that is my preferred method for adding contrast. And what I'm going to do is create what is known as an S curve. So we should have a histogram behind this linear line right here and inside of this grid. And that's going to represent the tonal ranges of your image, which will match the histogram you have up here. So as soon as I click on this line, you'll see the histogram show up. So this side is the blacks and the shadows. 
And then we have our midtones or the exposures in the middle. And then we have our highlights and whites on the end. So that's the same with your histogram. So what I want to do is I want to increase the brightness of the highlights and darken the shadows. So I'm going to click and drag up here to brighten up the highlights. But you may have noticed that I'm overexposing the sky now. So what I need to do now is decide if I'm OK with losing detail here or if I should lower the setting here back to where it was or reduce it some, which is going to still show some overexposure and then just darken up the shadows instead. And I think I'm OK with making this part of the image overexposed for two reasons. One, it's not that important of an element of the image. There's no detail there anyways that I can really see. There's no texture or anything like that. And we're going to end up darkening up the sky later on with another tool, which is going to compensate and reduce the overexposure here. So these are things that you have to think about and consider as you're editing. What other tools do you plan on using? And can you fix it with a different type of edit? Or should you reduce the adjustment now that you made with that specific tool? So increasing the highlights or making the highlights brighter and making the shadows darker adds contrast. And we can see that when we turn off the tone curve module or any module by clicking on this icon here to turn it off. And this is a great way to see the before and after. And as you can see, it's really flat here. And now we have some more contrast. All right, so let's go ahead and close this off. And what I want to do next is I want to remove this tree branch that is peeking in over here on the side. And I'm going to use my scroll wheel here to zoom in so I can see it a little bit better. And then I can click and drag to navigate around the image a little bit more if needed. Or you can actually do that up here in this navigational panel right here. So to get rid of this, I'm going to use our retouching tool, which is in the effects group. And what I'm going to use is the circle shape tool. We also have an oval, a path and a brush. But for this particular type of edit, I prefer using the circle shape. So with your scroll wheel, you can increase or decrease the size of that shape. And what I want to do is make it just a little bit larger than the element that I'm going to be retouching. So once I click here, Darkroom is going to add another circle, which is used to sample another part of the image to be used to cover up or retouch the area that needs to be, well, retouched. Now, sometimes Dart Table is not going to give you a good point of reference, and it may overlap with the original area that needs to be retouched. So what you can do is you can click on this circle here and move it into another position to create a better point of sampling. The other thing I want to do before I move on is I want to turn off these two circles to review that area that's being retouched. Now, if you take a closer look, you can kind of see some blurriness in the shape of that circle right here. So we need to blend that in a little bit better. So let's go ahead and turn these back on. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the feathering of this particular circle. And we can do that by holding down our shift key. So make sure you're in between these two lines here and then use the scroll wheel on your mouse to increase it. And then it's going to smooth out and feather that a little bit better than it was before. Now, the other thing I'm noticing now that we're zoomed in is all this digital noise. And I want to get rid of that. Now, typically, when I shoot at ISO 400, I don't have this much digital noise. But because I had a 30 second exposure, that tends to increase the amount of digital noise. And because my image was extremely underexposed when I fixed it, it added additional noise. So what I always recommend doing is trying to nail your exposure in camera at least as close as possible. And you'll end up with a higher quality image and you won't have to do these extra editing steps like reducing noise. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and come up here to the search module and type in noise to find our denoise tool. And we have four options. So which one should we use? Well, this first one is for astrophotography or designed for that type of photography. Surface blur is going to apply an edge aware surface blur to denoise or smooth out the textures. And I've never really used this one, so I don't know that much about this one. Now we do have denoise profiled, which is more of a common type of denoise filter or tool that you'll see in other software like Lightroom or Adobe Camera. And then we have raw denoise, which is a more complex, advanced type of denoise filter. So again, 
which one of these are you going to use? Well, it depends on your image and the type of noise that you have. So for this camera, my Nikon Z6, I found that the raw denoise works best for this particular camera. But I also have a Nikon D500 where I found that this option, the profile option, works better for images for that particular camera. So you have to experiment based on the camera that you have and the type of noise that is introduced. So I'm gonna go ahead and use raw denoise and once I turn this on, it's going to automatically remove all the noise. How cool is that? I love it. The only problem though is by default, the smoothing effect to remove the noise is intense and you'll end up losing a lot of texture and detail with the default settings. So that's where this extra linear line here and this grid and other options here give you more control over how much noise is reduced or removed and how much texture or detail is lost. So I don't want it to be this smooth because it looks fake, it looks plastic, especially when applying this tool on portraits, the skin looks really unnatural with these default settings. So what I wanna do is I want to introduce a little bit of noise back by clicking right here and dragging it down towards noisy. Next, I wanna increase the texture and the detail and I have two options, either coarse or fine. So fine will be smoother and coarse will be more intense. And you're gonna see more of that texture come back. So let's go ahead and click and drag this one down. And this node or anchor point I'm going to bring down as well. And yes, we have more digital noise, but it's not as bad as it was before. Plus, we've brought back some of that texture in there. Now, granted, this was a 30 second exposure, so we're not gonna have a lot of detail anyway because of the effects of the water being smoothed out during the process of the long exposure. I just wanted to bring back a little bit more texture so it wasn't too smooth. All right, so the next step is to darken the sky, the water, and add a little color tint to the image as well because I think the colors right now are a little boring and I wanna add a little bit more color pop to it as well, maybe a little color boost with some contrast as well. So what I wanna do is I wanna click on this icon here to bring back all the editing modules. So the tool for this job is going to be the graduated density tool, at least for this image, and this is the tool that I like for this particular effect that we're going to create. So once you click on your graduated density module here, you are going to see this horizontal line on your image. And this is the halfway point of the image right now. And we also have two triangles on either end, which you can click on and then rotate the line according to the direction of the adjustments, because what it's going to do is it's going to apply the adjustments from the top down to this line. So 100% of the edit will be applied up here at the top and it will gradually decrease to zero once it reaches this line. And then of course, anything below that line will not receive that edit. So I wanna apply this to the entire sky. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag this down to the horizon. And then in my graduated density module here, I'm going to increase the density and by default, it's already increased it by one stop. So if I turn this off, we can see that the sky is darker and the sky is no longer overexposed in this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase this to around two stops or two EV. So right about there looks pretty good. And then I'm going to use my hue slider here to change the color, but nothing happens. And that's because you need to increase the saturation first to add some color to it because right now, without any saturation, it's not going to render any colors in that area or render any effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag this over to the right to right about there should be good. And actually that's not the color I want. I want it to be more bluer to purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the hue slider here to the right. So right around there looks pretty good. All right, so I wanna do the same thing with the water now, but I wanna use different settings and that's why I didn't drop this all the way down to the bottom. So to create another density adjustment, we need to create a new instance for this module. So we're gonna click right here and select new instance to get another graduated density filter effect. So again, this line, this new line is applied in the middle of the image and it's starting from the top down. And we want to reverse that so I can either click and drag and rotate it that way or 
we can use the rotation tool, which I'm going to use, and let's drag it all the way to the right here to 180 degrees. All right, so I want this to start at the horizon again. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag this back down to here. And now the edits are being applied from down here all the way up to this line. So I think one stop looks pretty good. And as you can see, the blue overlay is much more brighter or intense than it was before. And that's because I'm clipping more of the blacks and the shadows and losing detail in that part of the image. But I'm okay with that for this particular image because it is a night or blue hour sunset type of photo and it's more of a silhouette of the tree stumps and I'm not really interested in keeping all the detail. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and increase the saturation again to about where we were before. And let's increase the hue to the right again to, I don't know, what do you think? I don't wanna go as purple as before. I want it to be a little bit bluer, so maybe right about there. I think that looks pretty good. Now, the other thing that you may have noticed once we darkened up the sky is the remnants of dust spots, and they're much more visible now than they were before we darkened the sky. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in right here. And we can go ahead and navigate over here to the left and we can see a spot right here. And there's a couple of other spots here as well. So to fix these, we're going to use the retouching tool again with the circle shape. And I'm gonna go ahead and click right here. Actually, I think maybe I need to make my brush size a little bit smaller. And then once I click here, Dark table will do its magic and it will magically disappear. And don't forget, you can go ahead and move these circles around to adjust it if it's not giving you the sample point that you need to completely remove it. And once you have all of those removed, there's one other thing that we need to fix as well. And what I'm noticing in the sky is some color banding. So the color banding resulted from some of the other adjustments that we've already done. And to fix that color banding, let's do a search for the dithering tool. And this should help eliminate or minimize this color banding. So once you turn this on, Darktable will do its magic again, and boom, the color banding is gone. How cool is that? All right, now that you've learned some tips for editing in Darktable, you can complete this project on your own to reinforce what you've learned. And then you need to know how to get your images out of Darktable so you can share them with the world and you'll discover how to do that in the next tutorial. So if you're ready for that, let's do it.